Well, hello, I hope you're all doing well. I just want to start off by saying, hey, and let's get into it. So this is JM, of course. I'm going to teach you how to make a very, very, very easy just render for any header, for any thumbnail, whatever you want to do, this will work perfect. And I just want to start off by saying, this is for beginners. If you don't know what you're doing, this will just be the easiest route to take. Just watch this video and you'll say, that is so simple. I want to subscribe and like it <laughs> and comment because it was so good. No, uh, but thank you guys so much for watching and only... I think 13% of you are subscribed, so if you could hit that subscribe button, that would mean the world to me, and you guys have been crushing it lately, so I want to thank you so much, thank you for 8k, thank you for all the views, and just, I don't know, all the support, it's been great. Also follow me on Twitter if you have any questions, or if you want to see my work, or if you want, um, there, are, there are a lot of giveaways on Twitter, I'll probably do one soon, so if you want to, like a header, header giveaway, it'll probably come up pretty soon, so yeah. I went to file, append, and then I chose my Blender file. If you don't know where to find Blender files, you can find them all over the internet, but I found my Blender file, clicked on it, clicked on options, and then selected the two. You can go back and see me do it. It's pretty simple. You just select the two and then click append. And now once we have it in, we can add our camera and we can start posing. Now if you don't know how to add a camera, you pretty much just go to add, camera, and boom, your camera's in. But you probably won't know how to place your camera how to pose everything and how to do all that so I'm going to teach you how to do that right now all right so here are the very basics of posing as you can see I did put my camera in and on the left there are th pretty much three you have to be three little squares you have to be sort of aware of if you want to just be a beginner you can see I'm using the one that's selected in light blue cyan right there that's pretty much you can just turn any um like you can rotate anything up and down left right or just like I don't know what the word is, but like around like a wheel kind of, if that makes any sense. But yeah, you can do that for that one. And then the one above it, you're pretty much taking your armature point and then moving it either left or right. That's really good for um, just like moving a character or moving a weapon or a certain, let's say, hair point. And then the one that's two below that is sort of you can make it skinnier or you can make it fatter or you can just make it larger or smaller um you don't you won't really need to use that unless you're doing like scenes and stuff like that or you're adding a weapon which we will be for this one but pretty much you can see right here you can hit f12 to sort of get a preview of your render here and yeah i'm pretty much just going to start posing and when i added my camera i clicked the four squares and then i yeah the not the four squares the four triangles and then i moved it backwards i moved it up and i got the camera in the right position that uh that'll be good you can see right here i'm just sort of going around and i'm using the thing to make the uh the head go down that's sort of what this is for you can see i can move it back up left or right i have my camera here and this is going to be how you move your camera when you come in your camera will be small but you're going to select the four squares and you can rotate it just like this or you can use the four triangles and just like move it up down left right wherever you want but you're going to want it so that the square is sort of facing your render and the um the point right there is back because that is sort of how you're going to be doing it and i, I want to get a low angle here and j just like just to put it in again this is for beginners so if you don't know what you're doing this will be perfect and you can see i'm doing every single step right here and you can just follow along if you want All right, and right here you can see I'm selecting these points. You might be wondering, how do I find these points? They're not in my character. Well, you can see where it says pose mode in the top left. You're gonna wanna click that, it'll be in object mode. Just go down and make it pose mode and you'll be good to go. And that'll give you all of these different points. And each point you can mess with, with you can mess with the location, with again the four um, 
what are those called the four arrows and then also you can mess with the sort of angle I'm doing right here I'm just rotating everything you can see I'm moving the arm back right there with the shoulder that's a really important angle there and then you can like do the sort of armpit or wait this is a weird question is it shoulder pit or armpit? I feel like there should be this should be called the shoulder pit and then the lower one should be called the armpit changed my mind in the comments I'm so sorry but I'm using that and I'm just kind of putting it up and then uh, like pretty much every single point you could just do the same thing too as long as you know these three different change the location uh, if you know how to rotate it like I'm doing right there then you'll be good to go and we'll add in a gun pretty soon and yeah that's about it Alright, so now you want to know how to put in your gun. It's so simple. It's exactly how we did with the other one. File, append, go to your desktops, find your file. Of course, you can just look up if you want to find these Blender files. I do not own them, so I can't give them away. But you'll just choose your weapon and just click append. Yeah, it's pretty simple. I'm putting in a pistol right here. You can put in whatever you want. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I'm putting in a shotgun. Of course, you can put whatever you want, and you'll just plop that right in and set it to object mode make sure you're not on pose mode remember on the top left make it smaller with this this is how you use the smaller the the shrink tool i guess we'll call it um for beginners uh you could just shrink it right here and you'll be good to go pretty much with this one you don't have to pose it because a shotgun its pose is really stagnant it doesn't move at all so you, you're just you're only going to want to pose your character and place that shotgun as it is right in the arm of the character Alright, and then right here, an excellent example of how to use the rotation tool, even though I'm kind of just butchering it right here, just for creative purposes. I'm just showing you, hey, this is all you can do with it. Select all these different angles, and that's how it, that's how it works. And then this is the, I guess we'll call it the move tool for beginners. You can just move it around, make sure it's in the right area, and then if you want to see how it looks with your camera, just hit F12, and it'll render it real quick out for you. That's a good way to do it for beginners, just so you can keep going back and back in and then click the X when you're done with it. You can see I hit F12 there just to see how it looks. It looks all right. Of course, we have to pose the hand, but yeah, you can see right there, the camera and the pose is it's doing pretty good, taking up some space and uh, we're getting there. Alright, I can't stress this next part enough, but making sure the eyes and the lips and the face and the hair are all like not where they originally are is just super important. I would, yeah, I would choose not the rotation tool, but the move tool right there that I'm doing above it. You can just make sure they have just sort of, um, 
I guess just like a look that doesn't look generic just like whatever you want honestly you can make you can make like a slight smirk you can make like you can change the eyebrows make them angry whatever you want just make sure you're not just doing generic so they're not just like staring at the camera uh maybe you want that for some stuff but for most stuff i would recommend just the eyes and the lips make a huge difference for when you're posing All right, I hope you're all doing well, and I hope you're all posed and ready to go for our rendering and our settings. All right, you can see right here, I just dragged up the thing at the bottom. I'm going to this thing right here, and I'm selecting Shader Editor, and I go to Object, and I go to World. It's pretty much uh, that you're going to do this for every single one. Of course, this is going to be in HDRI. You're going to go to Add, and click Environment Texture, and then put that in, and then click color to surface and then click open and then you're gonna find your hdri if you don't have an hdri um just like <laughs> download them find one um i'd find one it's not hard to find if you find like a fortnite assets pack on google drive with all that there will be hdris there and if you're a beginner i just recommend using these because they're super simple and as you can see right here you'll render it and it'll give it a nice little effect but before we do that and like have it all rendered and good to go we are going to have to mess with settings as you can see right here i'm just changing the hdri and seeing which one looks best but for settings there are a few that i would recommend as you can see on the right right there i have ambient occlusion checked i have bloom checked i have a lot of other things checked i have what do i have subsurface or screen surface reflections that is checked and yeah that's about it for that and we'll have to add lighting as well all right make sure you still have your world thing like dragged up and ready to go because we are going to be adding something else you can hit shift a or you can just search but we are going to search background and place it in you'll see me do it right here it's super simple and you'll be good to go once you have it All right, and here's me going more in depth into my settings and how I do it. You can see the render engine. I would go from EV to cycles, and then right here with shadows, make sure you click high bit depth and the highest cube size and the highest, uh, the thing below it size. I can't read it because Premiere is poopy. <laughs> but yeah, that's for shadows, and make sure you have all that. And then for render and viewpoint, you can mess with those too, but you're gonna wanna make sure you have 32 for the viewpoint or the render, you can make it however high you want, depending on your PC. I go with maybe 600 or mm, yeah, about 600 is fine, 800 is fine, whatever you want. I do have a more powerful PC, but if you have something worse, you know, just whatever works best and doesn't make your PC explode, it won't actually make your PC explode, but just like whatever your PC can handle without uh, crashing the software, make sure you do save before you do it because 
yeah so right here we're gonna start with lighting I'm just gonna hit right click and then light or you can just go add light but make sure you are in object mode right click light and then that right there point and you're gonna put it up you're gonna do a bunch of these and this is the most simple background lighting for how you just do it when you're a beginner pretty much this is how I did it when I was a beginner and it works pretty good but right here you can see right here I want to contact shadows I'm sort of messing with it right here you can do whatever you want just make sure you have that selected right there and you can just like mess with the sliders whatever works best but right here with the power you're just gonna want to mess with the power that's really the only one you have to mess with with all the other ones it's sort of optional but with the power just turn it up and then hit Control C, Control V on that um, the light you have right there with, of course, object mode selected, and just put a few around wherever you want. All right, so right here, you see I'm going to the shading tab. I'm going to go to object and then I'm going to go to world. You see I'll have all of this already there and you can add some other stuff if you want. This is of course optional, right click or shift A and then search up right there. Put that right in right there. Um, these are just of course levels and curves. If you're familiar with Photoshop, you know what it is, but yeah. So pretty much you can see what I'm connecting right here and dragging it up right there connecting of course the yellow right there color to color and you can mess with the thing right there what is it called the the levels right there it's so simple I would just make a sort of curve like I'm doing right here it doesn't have to be crazy just add some contrast some nice some nice contrast for the environment and you'll be good to go make sure you have the left up and the right down that's pretty much how I did it it's not super hard just whatever looks best for your render it's uh yeah it's sort of optional you don't have to do that of course and as you can see I'm putting this right here this is also optional too it doesn't make too much of a difference but if you want to do it you can see what I'm doing right there and yeah good to go
Alright, now it's time to actually render. Of course we have been in EV the whole time. EV isn't great, that's just kind of how you can preview it with the F12 if you have EV selected like we did earlier. But if you want to actually make it for the end and render it and make sure it looks all good and fun. Of course, um, right here you can see the tab film, make sure you do, do go down to film and select transparent for the background. But go to EV where it says, it'll drop down, make sure it's... um selected cycles not ev of course and then make the render size 300 and the viewpoint maybe 32 if you want but right there you can see then you can make a gpu or cpu i'd recommend gpu um and yeah you can see me right there and i'm hitting f12 and it is time we are finally rendering it and as you can see it's going to look so much better than it did before and you'll be good to go this is how i make my renders you can see it render out it's kind of satisfying here i'll speed it up but yeah you can see it turned out pretty decent for a beginner type of render and if you want to learn how to master lighting i will have another tutorial on how i actually do my uh I don't want to see, uh, I'll guess, I'll just say like better renders because this is just beginner render. And if you just practice this um, with my next tutorial, it'll kind of be like easier and you'll know what you're doing when it comes to like actual lighting. And we're going to do like different types of lighting and not just like points <laughs> and not HDRIs. But yeah, you'll see it's rendering out there and it doesn't look too bad. And that's pretty much it. You can see right there, you can go to image and then you can save it as a PNG and boom you have a wonderful render and you learn how to do that in 20 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. If you do like it, make sure to subscribe, all that good stuff, and comment, share it with a friend if you liked it. And if you don't like it, share it with your enemies and you'll be good to go. So I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for the support. Make sure you're, you, make sure you are subscribing and all that. And I'll see you later. Bye.